Good evening, folks, and there's been some more news on Star Trek Picard. I think there's been a news item every day in some format, and ooh, it's just, it's a charming news cycle, this uh, reporting on media. So, uh, the first bit of news has to do with Data being in the show, and whether or not he's a consistent regular, and it turns out, no, he's not in every episode, he's not a major character, and... It gives me the opinion that Data is kind of like a Guinan figure. It's hard to grasp exactly what his role is, aside from just being a guy who talks, and who exactly is who. So here's an interview that was done in July, so about two weeks ago, and Brent Spiner was part of the cast, and we thought, oh, he's, he's a regular. It turns out he's not. Um, we've gotten confirmation that, that you're playing Data again and not before. Correct. So. Although I think in that drawer is before, but I, I don't want to. Oh. oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, Data is indeed mm -hmm. on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, I spoke to Alex Kurtzman about this this morning to be able to say that, uh, not to lead you, you know, down a path, but he, he, he isn't in every episode. Mm -hmm. He makes uh, some appearances, but he is in the show uh, in, in other ways. Mm -hmm. Patrick, I know that you had. A Okay, so, yeah, we know Data's in the show, whoop de doo but he's not a main character. And I can assume that the other people uh, sitting here are. Uh, I don't know about Hugh. Uh, he's definitely uh, relevant, I would say, since it's a story about the Borg, and he is the Borg. Uh, same with Jerry Ryan. Um, it, it just as if they're just getting cast members and throwing them up against the wall, and hopefully people will like it which is a really sad state of affairs for Star Trek if all you're doing is running on nostalgia. Of course, the most nostalgic, most popular dude is Patrick Stewart, or Picard. And it's just this odd way of storytelling. I, why wouldn't they just do something new? Why wouldn't they just do a character study of what happens to an old guy in, in the future who's done all these things, who's gone through all this trauma, He's pretty much a reserved guy. He's not He's not gregarious. He's not outgoing. He's a very reserved gentleman. And now he's in France, living out his days, or trying to at least. And we don't know exact, his exact age. I'm assuming he's around <laughs> the same age as Patrick Stewart. And people live to be 150 in this universe, at least humans do. So he's got, he's, he's just over the, you know, if he's 70, 80, Ninety, he's just over the hill for uh, for ha the halfway mark, which is, I guess, okay. So you shouldn't be going through too many problems. Now, that's, that would be very interesting in a science fiction story to see what happens to the elderly in their world who are, you know, essentially uh, 45, if you're talking about men or women being roughly 70, 80 years old uh, before they die. So, yeah. That would be cool. I'd like to see a, a guy of that age, of that, in that world, in that level of technology and medicine, and what he would do. But apparently, they're not, they're not doing that. They're doing some sort of hybrid between Discovery and TNG. Now, the writing, I can say, at least the writer is decent. Um, but that doesn't mean that you're still not polishing a turd. The idea, the, the foundation still comes from Alex Kurtzman. I think I'm pronouncing his right. Was it Kurtzman? Alex. Am I spelling that right? I don't know. Anywho, so uh, same thing. Um, he makes appearances. Data's story is a part of the thread of the show. So Data did die, but I am on the show. I do make appearances. So the next theory was that, oh, he's just... Just a holodeck recreation. He's the AI. He's just the software that was stored in B4 and whatever happened to Data is now gone. I do not know. So up until this point, to be honest, I have only worked with Patrick on the set. So it sounds like a very, like honestly, the face looks a bit puffy. It looks very strange. Um, hard to say what's going on with Data. Data has been very, very good to me, but as I've often said, love is a very personal thing. Yeah, so again, fantastic actor. Everyone loves Data, of course, the character. The scripts are so good. The writing is so great. 
they have put together a really great cast. It's Patrick Show. It's Picard Show. The players they have assembled around him to an actor are really terrific. I think you're going to love this cast and love the whole tr- thrust of the show. Okay, here it is. Um, the pedigree of the writing staff was very difficult to say no to. It was Alex Kurtzman and Akiva Goldsman, who won an Oscar for A Beautiful Mind, and the showrunner Michael Shaban. That's, that's the guy who is the Pulitzer Prize winner. Oh, and he says so, a Pulitzer Prize winning novelist. And then there was the opportunity to sit across with Patrick again and share that experience with him. Patrick and I are really, really good friends, and Brent Spiner jokes around a lot at conventions. I'm sure you might have heard some jokes he's told in his impersonation of Patrick. I did some little stuff with him on Blunt Talk and a really good time. And also you guys pointing to the audience and fans because I thought if it got into the wind that they asked me to do it and I said, no, you would not be coming to my show on Saturday night. Okay. So, eh, hard, hard to, to say what's going on here. It's still a mystery as to what this show is going on about. Uh, there's a bit more information from, I believe, uh, what was her name? Julie McNamara. And how she's describing how Star Trek is kind of like Discovery. It's kind of like the next generation. This is a very strange way of describing where Picard fits in the timeline, where it fits in the storytelling techniques. Because we saw the trailer. The trailer was very flashy. And a little bit of action in there. Obviously not from Picard, but in general. It's like, what's? why is everything so flashy? This is not a character study? How is this going to work? And I can't, I can't say. I don't know what they're going for. But because Alex is in it, or Alex's fingers are, are in it, it's it's hard to say. And they don't know how long the show is going to go for. They haven't figured out whether it's going to be two years or three years. <laughs> there's no there's no budget. It's just, just this, we're going to make Picard. So there's other things going on with Picard. And that is bringing back the Picardo, Robert Picardo who plays also Louis Zimmerman, as well as the hologram, the Doctor. So it feels as if they're just throwing cameos. They're like, Star Trek, for some reason, isn't as popular as Discovery. And I haven't seen Discovery, so I don't know why it's getting a third season. I don't know if it's only to do with money and how the CBS All Access Pass works whether they're making money as a result of that. But for whatever reason, it's making a third season. And they're trying to bank on Picard. I don't get it. But the things they're doing, as I reported, I think, last week, uh, they're doing a a package deal of the four Star Trek movies and the two episodes that had Patrick Stewart in uh, two two, two back-to-back episodes. So the... One where he gets captured by the Cardassians, and the, where, the one where he gets captured by the Borg. Great shows. And they're just reselling the same package. Why would they do that? Fans already have the old package if they bought it. Fans already saw the show. Fans already saw the movie. I'm not sure. Then you have other weird things like this. The new Star Trek wine lets you sample Captain jean luc Picard's vino. And I'm not really a wine guy. I do know quite a lot of wines. I've never heard of this brand of wine, the Cru Bourgeois, which is from Bordeaux. So it's a French wine. Fine. It's authentically French. Whatever. It makes you wonder. You know, it's a rather pricey number for uh, for wine. 120 smackers. Uh, that's... You're going in the realm, at least in my taste, to scotch. Really, really good scotch. And it's just it's just a weird, strange thing. They have a website for it already, StarTrekWines.com. The Picard wine. A special reserve bottle. It's just awkward. Vintage 2017. This thing is two years old. I don't know too many wines that are that are good after two years two years old, but a Zinfandel, 
that is not worthy of my tastes, at least as a, as a non-wine guy who appreciates wine. Anyone knows rosés or white Zinfandels, those, th those things are, it's like pop. It's, you know, maybe a year, year and a half tops, age in the bottle. So, Dry Creek and Russian River Valleys, Sonoma Country Sea. See, this doesn't make sense. If it's from California, why is it saying it's from Bordeaux? Wait, unless they're just saying, oh, see, they're playing with the label. Or maybe maybe the other one, sorry, maybe the, the other bottle is actually from Bordeaux, and this special reserve is different. That could be it. Okay. That would make a bit more sense. Like, this one is from Bordeaux. Yeah, okay. Grand, Grand Vin de Bordeaux. Okay. Fine. <laughs> a little confusion there. But you can see what's going on here. They're, they're making a buck off merch. What is going on with Star Trek? When was this ever an issue that they had to start selling a bunch of merch that happens to be wine before the show is even out? And they're they're just getting all these all these actors. Jesse Ryan, Robert Ricardo, Brent Spiner, the guy who plays Hugh, sorry, I can't remember his name. Like, I love the idea of, of Seven of Nine, Hugh, Janeway, and any other Borg-related concept and going, holy crap, we got to deal with the Borg. Humanity's in trouble. Because that was kind of the big deal of the first episode with Q in the first season. What is, what is this being trying to scare us about? Oh, my God, there's this enemy called the Borg, and they just will eat you all up. And there's been all these theories about the Borg, how... The Borg are just sort of waiting and waiting for civilizations to advance to a point where their their technology is at a certain level. Why, who, when, where? Like, what, is that a cycle? Is that some sort of galactic thing that's slowly merging? Now, of course, we learned a lot about the Borg in the last few episodes of Voyager and also throughout Voyager as well. So... Do they want to reinvent the Borg? Do they want to tell a new story? And of course, we saw a lot about the Borg in uh, First Contact. So working with an old pattern is fine. It's just, why are they introducing so many actors? Again, then there's going to be Jonathan Frakes, Marina Sirtis. She's, they're going to appear in here eventually. Jonathan Frakes is already a director. Uh, that's cool. He's been a director of other shows like that as well. So makes sense. But you see what they're doing. They're just playing into nostalgia without a lot backing it up and definitely not what would work with an elderly man kind of story, regardless of it being in the future. It's, it's very awkward, and I don't know how it's going to run. Again, I loved the, the trailer because of nostalgia. You're like, oh, wow, Jerry Ryan. I wasn't expecting that. I didn't expect the ninja chick and, and the teleporting bad guys <laughs> and the Vulcans who were actually Romulans with swords. Wasn't expecting that. Don't know what the dog was all about. That was just a promotional poster thing. And unfortunately, he's only in one episode, apparently. So, yeah, I don't know. If I see the next thing, they're going to start selling merch. Next week's going to be like a keychain, a t-shirt, and all this other crap. You're like, all right, this is a joke. This is sad. But what do you guys think? I, I'm really curious. Have you heard anything, uh, any other rumors, any other behind-the-scenes sort of talk of what this show is about, who's in it, what's the plot line? It, it's, it's, a, it's a mystery. I, I feel kind of sad to see these things happen because Star Trek ended, Voyager ended, the movies are finally over, these actors are not getting back together, but yet they are. And you're like, no... <laughs> Please stop. Do something new that isn't Discovery that we might actually appreciate. So thanks for listening, guys. Have yourself a great day.